In the first example in lesson four, we're expanding and we're using the distributive property to multiply 4a squared over b to b negative 2 over a to the power of 4 minus 3ba over a squared. So I'm going to multiply my top with the top or numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So I'm going to have 4a squared b to the negative 2 over a to the fourth b. Okay, and now I'll multiply 4a squared over b to the second fraction. The sign will stay the same because this is positive and positive and negative stays negative. So 4 times 3 is 12. a squared times a is a cubed. And then b will remain the same. And then b times a squared is a squared b. Okay, now we need to simplify our expression. The 4 will stay the same. And it doesn't say whether we want our exponents to say positive or negative. I'm just going to go ahead and make them positive. So I'll bring b down here and a down here. So 4 will be on top all by itself. So I'll have a to the second power because 4 minus 2 is 2. And then I'll have b to the third power because 1 minus a negative 2 is like 1 plus 2 so that would make a 3. Minus sign again stays the same so dropping down. And then on my next fraction, I'm going to bring up my a squared, so that will make an a on top. And the b's both have the same exponents on top and bottom, so they can cancel out because they would make a 1. And then we can leave our answer as 4 over a squared b cubed minus 12a. The second example in lesson four is also over expanding. So again, we're using the distributive property to multiply the um, fraction on the outside by the two terms on the inside. Now this b is to the power of zero, so that is just a one. So one times a to the negative three is still just a to the negative three. So I'm gonna go ahead now that I don't need to worry about that, b to the zero and multiply a to the negative 3 and a squared so that would make a to the negative 1 okay the b is going to just stay there the c will just stay there and then on bottom we'll have c times c squared so that's c cubed the minus sign will just drop down it's not going to change since this was positive the 3 will stay the same and then I'll have a to the negative 3 times a to the negative 2, so that is a to the negative 5. Okay, then c times b to the negative 2, which be b to the negative 2c. Alright, and now we're going to see if we can simplify this expression. Um, there's not another a, there isn't another b, but we can eliminate this c. So this has an exponent of 1, so if I take away 1 here, this would become 2. I'm just subtracting the 1 from the 3 since we're dividing. So that would be a to the negative 1, b over c squared minus, and on this one there aren't any other a's or b's or c's or 3's so that's just going to stay the same and then we have expanded our expression
In the third example, in lesson four, we are solving for x. We have x on both sides of the equal sign. What I want to do first is distribute the negative sign so I can remove those parentheses. So I'll have 12 minus 2x minus 5 equals a negative 2. And because this has a positive sign or a positive 1 in front, this can just stay the same and we don't have to keep the parentheses. So plus x minus 3, that minus will just stay the same. And now we're going to combine our like terms on each side of the equation separately first. So there's not another x on the left side, so it's going to stay negative 2x. But I can combine the 12 and the negative 5. So I'll have 12 minus 5, which is 7. So it's a plus 7. And then on the right side, I can combine the negative 2 and the negative 3. So that would be x minus 5. All right. At this point, we want to get our variable on one side of the equation and our constant on the other side of the equation. I'm going to subtract the x. So I'll have negative 3x equals, and then I'll subtract the 7. And negative 12. And then I can divide both sides by negative 3. So x equals 4 on the side of our equation for x. In lesson 4, example 5, we're using the change sides, change signs rule to solve for x. Here we have x minus 2 equals 7. So if 2 is negative on the left side of our equation, when we move it to the right side, it'll be a plus 2. So that means that x would equal 9. And we've solved our equation. In lesson 4, example 6, we're using the transposition rule to solve for p. That simply means that we're going to take whatever is beside p, move it to the other side, and their signs will change. Okay? So since this is a negative 3x here, on the other side, it will be a positive 3x. And then, since this is a positive 4 here, it will be a negative 4 on the other side. So, e equals 7y plus 3x minus 4. And we've solved for p. In the example 4.7 from lesson 4, we're solving for y, so we're starting with 3y minus 2x plus 5 equals 0, and we want to get this y by itself. So our first step is to move the other terms to the right side of the equation. So on the other side, that's going to be a positive 2x and a negative 5. And now at this point it's equal to the 3y. Now we need the y to have a coefficient of 1. To get that, what we're going to do is divide everything by 3. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 5 thirds. And then we've solved for y.